It is yet another time to experience the power of God as Apostle Joshua Selman ministers. I remember many years ago, there used to be this wonderful group. Um, it was a music group and they went through a lot of stress because they were not believed. I knew the people were born again. I knew they loved Jesus with all their hearts. And I told them that time, I said, look, with the resources I had then, I will contribute gladly in helping you. Listen, let me tell you something about the body of Christ. We must be very careful. We are losing a lot of fish because we are destroying the efficiency of fishermen simply because their tools for catching fish is different from what we are using. We need to be careful. If on my way going, I find someone who is a professional, how many of you know that there are many fellowships that are around many, you know, careers, like um, say for instance, the Immigration Christian Fellowship. I preach there every year. So you have to be a uniform person to even have access to that kind of place. I have the honor of preaching there every year. I've preached there for like eight years or so, maybe eight or ten years. Every year, at least once, I go there. There are people who have been born again there. And the way God got them born again was to give them jobs with immigration so that they can attend that fellowship. There are many students, the only way they got saved was by getting admission. Because there are programs their parents will never allow them go. So you will find out that the child's jam score was not up to it, but God still gave the child admission. Because it was more than just getting a degree. God needed that child to be released from a hostile home, to be in an atmosphere where he can pray. That child will never be allowed to have a night vigil where he or she is coming from. That's how many of you got saved. The message is, respect the diversity of ministries within the body. Provided they are genuinely born again and provided they love God. Don't make business people feel less of witnesses. Don't let drama actors, Christian drama ministries, feel less of actors. Don't allow worshippers, those called into the worship ministry. You may not like the way they jump. But don't be too quick to judge. Go and find out the investments they make in the secret before they come out to jump. Don't be too quick to judge. Just because they sing the way you don't want does not mean they are not singing to the glory of God. Are we together? Don't judge people called into campus ministry. They are ministries to young people. They will wear t-shirts and jeans and be jumping. Don't, don't laugh at those who are called into the ministry of fitness and they are using it for the gospel. Their job is to tell their story from losing so, so, so pounds. Now I am weak and they preach Jesus. We must respect the fishing tools that every fisherman carries. Now the truth I must balance is that there are tools that are not tools. For instance, if we see you standing with a knife at sea, you are not a fisherman because holding that knife that way is not a tool. So I'm not just saying we should just celebrate any tool. No, the tools may be diverse, but when you see a fishing tool, you know because you can see the assignment of that tool and you can see the result from using that tool. Fishers of men. Are we learning? There are many ministries that should not have died. They died today out of guilt because there was no more space for them in the body of Christ. We have defined by our understanding about God what ministries are of God and what ministries are not of God. And in doing that, maybe sincerely so, we have closed down many great ministries and it ought not to be so. How many women ministries have died today because we are attempting to manage excesses? How many music ministries have died today because we are attempting to manage excesses? How many discipleship platforms have died today simply because we did not understand the nature of their call? 
when you see a ministry not working in alignment, you'll be learning. The key is not to destroy it. The key is to trust God for alignment. Is someone learning? If you're learning, say amen. amen. So number one, you need to understand the sea, the world. Are we learning? Number two, you need to know the various kinds of fish. We're still learning. Number three, you need to understand the various techniques. Are we still together? The various techniques. That there are several ministries. There are diversities of ministries across the body. When you see the ministry of the man who was once a madman in Gadara, don't be quick to judge it. When you see the ministry of the woman who was once a prostitute, who left her water pot to run and go and call other people, and you see the woman who was once a prostitute saying, come see a man, don't be too quick to say it is not of God. When you see the ministry of the woman breaking her alabaster box before Jesus, don't be quick to see the wastage. When you see the ministry of Joseph of Arimathea, his ministry was not to follow Jesus for evangelism. When you see him buying the gravesite, don't say it's a waste. That's where Jesus will be buried. Number four, fishers of men. The fourth training that every fisherman needs to go through, which represents the training of a soul winner. Are you ready now? You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. This is a very powerful one. You must have a functional boat to gather the fish you have caught. Luke chapter 5, please. Give us 4 and 4 to 6. If your boat is not strong, you can catch an amount of fish that would destroy the boat and end up destroying your life. Luke chapter 5 from verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, Jesus now, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Nets for a catch. Verse 5. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my net. Verse 6. And when they had this done, watch this, the Bible says they enclosed a great multitude of fish, but there was a problem now with that harvest, and their nets break. Their nets break. And I can imagine that the boat, that boat there that they now transferred everything to, the boat was even going down because of the size of the fish. Can I tell you? There are many people who God will not give the anointing and the mantle to bring a certain kind of harvest because their boat, their ministerial capacity cannot manage the kind of ingathering they will have. With all due respect, there are servants of God, there are Christian platforms. God cannot give them 1,000 souls in one day. There is no boat that has been designed to keep that fish. Number one is that there is nowhere to even take those people who are saved. Are we together now? We are preparing for a sound of revival and we have invested so much building a prayer team, building counselors in anticipation of the kind of harvest we know and believe by faith that God is bringing. You cannot be holding a crusade for instance and then you train just 10 counselors or two counselors something is wrong with your boat you see let me tell you this every time you catch so much fish and your boat is too small something happens both you and the boat and the fish will be lost do you have systems in place to follow up the sinners that are saved or is it one man of god who will do everything and you will die of stress within one month because the problem was not the harvest it was that the boat was not efficient are we learning every fisherman knows that pending on the kind of fish you want to catch 
you must ensure that the boat, the boat can mean the church, the boat can mean your follow-up strategy, the boat can mean the people you have raised to be able to make sure and ensure that the souls, the sinners that are saved are not lost. I learned this from Reinhard Bonke of Blessed Memory. He used to have a pamphlet, a book called Now That You Are Saved. The moment you are saved, so what happens, his strategy was because he didn't run a church-based ministry. He usually organized his crusades in collaboration with the local assemblies. So before the crusades, he would do what they call fire conference and he would train the pastors to make sure that they are efficient enough to receive the harvest. After the crusades, the people who are already in various churches are distributed back to their churches and those who do not have churches are redistributed across local assemblies to make sure that there is a follow-up system and the strategy worked. Are we together? The same has been used with many great evangelists. There's no point winning 20,000 people, 5,000 people, and as soon as the people confess Jesus, they go back and there is no system to help them. They go back to their lives and before you know it, you will never imagine they were once saved. Training number four, make sure your boat is efficient. There must be structures on ground, a strong follow-up system, an establishment system for the harvest that we desire. Joshua Nimax Selman was born 25th of June, 1980, in Zaria, Kaduna State, Nigeria. Also known as Apostle Joshua, Selman is a Nigerian gospel minister, conference speaker, and televangelist. He is the founder and senior pastor of the Eternity Network International, ENI. The ENI have a program called Koinonia, a gospel fellowship held weekly in Samaru, Zaria, Kaduna State, as well as in Abuja, Nigeria. Here are five fascinating facts about Apostle Joshua Selman. Number one, a spiritual leader. Apostle Joshua Selman is a renowned Nigerian gospel minister, televangelist, and founder of Eternity Network International, ENI, and the Koinonia Megachurch. Number two, an inspiring teacher. He is known for his insightful and impactful teachings on the Word of God, which have endeared him to millions of followers worldwide. Number three, an author and a writer. Apostle Selman has written several best-selling books, including The Majesty of God's Power and The Beauty of God's Presence. Number four, a music minister. He is also a gifted music minister and has released several worship albums, including Your Majesty and The King's Majesty. Number five, a conference speaker. Apostle Selman is a sought-after conference speaker and has ministered at various events and conferences globally, sharing the message of God's love and redemption. For more contents like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash the like button. You can also do the work of an evangelist by sharing this video to at least two people you love most. See you in our next video. God bless you. Mm -hmm.